Today I want to show you how you can go from this low FPS horrible experience in Borderlands 4 to this beautiful high FPS experience by just tweaking a few graphics settings nice and easy in the game menu and without losing much in terms of visuals. Just take a look at it. Close to 100 FPS. Massive difference, isn't it? The first low FPS experience was when I was using the absolute maximum graphics settings on a 4K monitor using the RTX 5090. Below 60 FPS, right? One would expect that uh, the most powerful graphics card would be able to do that at native 4K resolution. But no, Borderlands 4 developers don't think that way. And once again, community has stepped in and basically found a way to enjoy the game anyways. Credit for researching all of these optimized graphics settings goes to Tim from Hardware Unboxed. He's done a beautiful job creating this guide. So yeah, check it out. I'll link it in the description below. He's got like side-by-side -side comparisons going through all of these settings, explaining what they do, what kind of uh, performance impact they have. Brilliant job. I would like to complement that video with this video by showcasing how those optimized settings work at various upscaling qualities, as well as with frame generation enabled. Let's start by having a look at the native 4K resolution. Will we have 60 FPS? Yes, indeed. Instead of 40 plus FPS using the absolute maximum graphics quality preset, we are now seeing 60 plus FPS consistently. So even if you want to play at native 4K resolution, you absolutely can if you want that 60 FPS experience. And just take a look at the graphics. They still look brilliant. They don't look much different to the absolutely maxed out settings. Super close. Extremely close visually. Also, as a strange byproduct of uh, this tweaking, uh, the GPU is actually consuming way less power. 460 watts. Previously, it was drawing well above 500. So, yeah, there's uh, power saving and um, comfort in that because the GPU is not outputting as much heat as it used to. Let's enable DLSS quality mode on top of this. Yes, that's 80 plus FPS experience now. Without losing any significant levels of detail, because DLSS 4 works great on a 4K monitor. Here I have a 32 inch 4K display and it looks great. With this set of settings, fighting enemies is a pleasure. Take a look at this. Beautiful. Pleasant. Huh. Nice and fluid experience, even without frame generation. There you go. Easy to aim. Well, much easier to aim than at 40 plus FPS. And then you can increase that FPS even further if you are okay with using lower DLSS qualities. Let's go for the balanced next. In terms of fine details, DLSS balanced still looks good and it's providing us with a little bit more FPS. Now we're staying at around 90-ish instead of 80 plus. So that's quite a nice boost to our performance on top of what we had previously. That's always nice to have. Let's take a look at DLSS performance mode next. Now we're getting closer to a high refresh rate experience because we're getting above 100 FPS. And the game still looks brilliant. Of course, finer details don't look as crisp and sharp, but this is still visually looking very good. Minimum visual issues introduced by DLSS and the image fluidity is perfect because we're getting above 100 FPS. And this is without frame generation. And the graphics still look amazing, very close to maxed out. And the GPU power consumption is once again lowered. Yeah, that's the way it goes sometimes when you use DLSS. <laughs> You're getting lower 
power consumption, which is quite nice actually. Doesn't get as hot in the room <laughs> while I'm using the RTX 5090. And now let's add frame generation on top of this, starting with the 2x mode. To monitor this, I enabled the Steam overlay. That is great because it shows our real FPS as well as generated frames. FG means frame generation. It is helpful to see this information because I really want to know like how many real frames are we getting right now. Frame generation does increase latency which means real FPS is lower and indeed it is lower because previously we've had something like 110, 100 plus FPS and now we're getting 80 to 90 plus FPS. That is quite significantly lower but the overall frame rate is higher and the mouse responsiveness is fine it's not a problem still quite responsive because the fps is still pretty high 80 plus it feels good i moved the fps counter over here for easier tracking and let's take a look at the 4x frame generation Generating additional frames consumes a little bit more FPS. I'm talking about real FPS. And now we went from something like 80 to 90 FPS to 70 to 80 plus FPS. You see, that's 79, 78 FPS. So the real frame rate is a little bit lower, but our Overall, generated frames are above 300 <laughs> a lot of times. That makes the image on the screen extremely fluid. But the responsiveness of controls is worse. I'm talking about the mouse, of course, how we interact with it. Uh, it's um, getting a little bit more difficult to aim properly it's uh, not as comfortable, but it's still good enough to actually enjoy the game properly. That said, if I were playing with frame generation enabled, I'd actually just to keep it on the V2X mode, because that felt good in terms of image fluidity, and it also felt better in terms of mouse responsiveness. The 3X frame generation mode is in between the two extremes. Actually, it makes more sense on this monitor because our real FPS is slightly higher than what we had previously with the 4x frame generation and um, generated frames are close to 240 and that perfectly lines up with the 240 hertz display that this monitor has. Now let's increase DLSS quality to balanced and go back to the 2x frame generation. This is still a nice experience, but our real FPS is now in the 70 to 80 plus range and generated frames are about 160. With this set of settings, it is still easy to aim and land shots, single shots, accurate shots, pretty good. I like it. Let's bump it up to the 3x frame gen. Our real frames are still above 70 and the total number of frames is close to 240. Not quite consistently at 240, sometimes dropping to 210-ish. And it is still quite easy to aim. The mouse is still responsive. I can point it exactly where I want it to be. Moving on to DLSS quality mode and back to frame generation 2x. This is still an okay experience. Total number of frames is still well at above 120, 150 to 140 ish actually. So that's nice. Feels nice and fluid. Where are the enemies at? There we go. Another headshot right there. And boom, you're dead too. Decent experience, but what if we want more frames? So let's use the 3x frame generation. The frame rate is quite a bit higher now, around 200 plus FPS. Yeah, but uh, the mouse responsiveness is worse and worse with every time we actually, you know, maximize that frame generation. The more frames 
being generated, the more uh, the mouse responsiveness suffers. Because our real frame rate is now dipping into 60 plus sometimes. But for the most part, it is staying at around 70 ish. So it's not horrible, it's just uh, a little bit less responsive, I would say. Oh, the big guy. Let's go. I love my new sniper rifle. It is extra powerful because it can just charge up to five shots on this thing. That's just mad. 3,300 damage instead of a single shot which lands us... what? Let's see, 461 damage, which is quite a lot for my current level. Let's do the 4x frame generation. That dropped our real frames to 60 plus quite consistently. So it is lower, but generated frames are now staying at uh, well above 240, which is what you want to see if you want to max out your 240 Hertz monitor. I can't say that this is a horrible experience. This is still okay in terms of image fluidity and mouse controls. I still feel the mouse quite well, but uh, not quite as well as uh, with previous <laughs> frame rates. Because, yeah, uh, once you get used to having high frame rates and uh, low latency as a result of that, uh, it's um, getting more difficult to actually you know, aim precisely with lower frame rates. So, nah. This, um, this set of settings is not for me. It's great to have high frame rate. And if you're that set on, you know, having higher image clarity, then this is the kind of settings that you can use. But personally, I prefer higher frame rates. And I'm talking about real frames for actual benefits to the controls latency. I guess let's also check out the performance with frame generation at native 4K resolution. So that's native 4K to X frame gen. Our real frame rate is now at 50 plus FPS and uh, this is something that I definitely don't like. It's um, getting harder and harder to aim properly. Uh, yeah, the, the mouse movements just feel weird to me, especially after experiencing beautiful, beautiful higher refresh rate experiences with higher frame rates previously. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it'll take some getting used to, that is for sure. This is something that you can adapt to, but why bother if you can have higher frame rates to begin with? By sacrificing just a little bit of uh, fine detail clarity, I'm talking about using DLSS resolution upscaling, of course. For a complete picture, let's take a look at uh, the rest of the frame generation modes. 3x. The frame rate is higher, 150 to 160, but our real frames are in the 50s. 55, 59, and uh, the mouse feels even less responsive. That doesn't feel good at all. Oh my god, a big guy. Boom. Be gone. Oh, oh, that's a black hole. I'm getting sucked in. Oh, I've seen 48 FPS just then. So, yeah, there's... <laughs> this is uh, not pleasant. I, I don't like this. I can still play the game and I can still kind of aim somewhat properly, but... It just doesn't feel good. And lastly, the 4x frame generation. Yeah, the overall frame rate is now again above 200, but the real frames are 50-ish, 48. So basically we're now dropping below 50 more frequently, which reduces our mouse responsiveness even further. Not pleasant, I do not recommend. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this will help you improve your Borderlands 4 experience because it truly transformed my experience in this game. 
This set of optimized settings is just brilliant. Let me know if you want to see a similar video showcasing other GPUs that I have in my arsenal. And if you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to reward my work with a like. It helps me out greatly, it boosts the channel, and it boosts my will to make more videos. Furthermore, subscribe for more videos like this if you haven't already. It was I, Vadim, until next time.